we might have all been from different places and believed in different things, but that didn't seem to matter much because we all wanted the same thing, really. We wanted to go home. Today on the Comic Book Report, Junkyard Joe by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm finally reviewing the paperback collection for Junkyard Joe, part of Jeff John's unnamed universe over at Image Comics. I had the honor to do kind of a first look at the first three issues of this comic before it was released, so I'm elated to go all the way around now with the paperback collection. Before we dive in though, just a quick shout out to our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking to get comic book collected editions, check out their link in my description. You can even use my code, the comic book report, to save $2 off of your order. Please note if you use my affiliate link or code to make a purchase, I will earn a small commission. But it's a fantastic way to support our channel. Thank you so much for considering, now let's get started with today's review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written by Jeff Johns and illustrated by Gary Frank. The comics in this volume were published by Image Comics beginning in 2022. The volume itself collects Junkyard Joe issues 1 through 6. And finally, this standard size trade paperback collection comes in at 208 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that trade paperback collection from Image Comics. And right from the jump, this is not the image that's really solicited when you see this collection. I'm really baffled that they didn't use a cover that has like the full-on presence of Junkyard Joe. Instead, we get this kind of scrap of the comic book on a field of snow. A really, really interesting choice here. I'm not a fan of the cover they chose, but it is still a striking cover. I like the white. I don't really see editions like this. The rest of it looks pretty good. I like the back cover. Overall, this is a great glossy print paper stock edition, has some glued binding, a pretty standard trade paperback over at Image. And now we'll go ahead and transition to a look at that binding itself. Like I said, it's a pretty standard glued binding you can expect to see in most trade paperback collections. I personally didn't have any problem with it, maybe a little bit of gutter loss here and there, but overall this book was really well constructed. Other than a kind of questionable cover choice, I think that this was a really good little book. Now, if you caught it at the beginning of this video, this is another entry in Jeff John's unnamed universe over at Image Comics. The first release was Geiger, which was also Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This was a really fun dystopian kind of nuclear powered sort of hero or anti-hero in this like kind of wasteland future of America. The whole conceit of this unnamed series appears to be kind of a whole new uh, set of folk tales, American heroes that have to band together for some kind of threat. We don't really know what that's going to look like quite yet because we've only had Geiger and now Junkyard Joe and we have little teases for what comes next. I did go ahead and reviewed Geiger on the channel before. You can find that video. I also mentioned that I did a first look at the th first three issues of this series before it came out. I loved having that opportunity. I have that video as well. But I was actually given two signed copies of a Junkyard Joe issue as kind of a thank you for the review or kind of overview. And they were signed by Jeff Johns, it looks like. Really, really cool single issues to have in my collection. There's some of the black and white variant issues. Uh, again, they didn't have to send me this, but what a really cool thank you for doing that video. I just want to give you a couple more shots of these signed issues I got. I don't have a ton of author signed stuff. I know I had the Batman Beyond Neo Year guys uh, sign my trade paperback of that. I think I have a copy of Chew that was also signed. Just a couple things here and there. But this was a really cool treat. I love Jeff Johns, particularly for his DC work, though I'm becoming a massive fan of this stuff over at Image. I'm really eager to see what the unnamed series has for the future. I think the next one's the Red Coat, which is set during the Revolutionary War period. I can't wait for that to come out. I know I have to wait even longer because of the collected edition thing, but I am eagerly anticipating what the future holds. 
At any rate, let's go ahead and transition back to our Junkyard Joe paperback for today, and let's dive right into this series proper. I can't wait to talk about it. So this trade paperback collects the first six issues. Like Geiger, this is kind of a good jumping off point, not knowing if we'll see an issue seven or not. It can really stand alone by itself. I know there is going to be this bigger shared universe idea, but I really hope we still dive back into these worlds for their initial titles, because I think that they are really solid foundations. So the first issue of Junkyard Joe has us back in 1972 in the Vietnam War, Vietnam conflict. We have this kind of platoon of American soldiers who all want to just kind of get their job done and go home to their sweethearts, back to their lives. They're all these kind of young men just out in the forest having to do... Well, things that sometimes war demands, but they are really kind of humanized characters that we've seen in a lot of war images and war movies kind of depicted. At any rate, in their platoon is this kind of stoic, silent soldier that we don't know much about that's name is Joe. Well, as this platoon goes through the forest, we have them kind of encountering fire, and we have Joe kind of caught in the crossfire trying to protect the rest of his fellow soldiers, and we have his skin kind of blown away in different areas, and it's revealed that Joe is actually a robot. Uh, they have no idea where he came from or kind of what's going on. He seems to be on a mission, but right away you're in the midst of the kind of Vietnam jungle, and everyone's really alienated by this robot. Uh, except for Muddy, who's our main character, Character really outside of Junkyard Joe. He kind of befriends him, tries to sort of anthropomorphize or humanize Junkyard Joe. And after like kind of a couple more days, we have this whole platoon basically uh, killed in the war, except for Muddy and Junkyard Joe. But there's definitely a high degree of trauma. We have Muddy kind of in a hospital unit on the battlefield. He's basically being sent home, but he's kind of talking about where's Joe? Uh, you know, this guy saved my life. He's a robot. And they're basically saying, you can either stick to that story or you can believe the truth, which was that there was no robot. You're just dealing with trauma. So we have him go home. We find out he's a gifted artist and he basically makes like a classic Americana kind of newspaper strip that goes on forever and ever in the vein of kind of a Charles Schultz Peanuts or kind of a Beetle Bailey or Sad Sack kind of little comic series and we have it kind of flashing forward to the present day he's now an old man a recent widower after his wife has finally passed away and he has this decades upon decades long legacy writing this series Junkyard Joe which is kind of a really really non-threatening version of their friendship and he's now considering retiring after the passing of his wife and this is where the story really begins to take place. We have next door neighbors moved in. It's a single dad who has also lost his wife with three children, two daughters and a son. And they try to acclimate into this very more rural kind of environment, this small town feel. But they're all really alienated. Again, all three of those kids lost their mom recently. Uh, the single dad's not handling it super well. He kind of moved across country, won't really talk about it. At any rate, they're next door neighbors with Muddy, who has become kind of reclusive. He was always maybe a little bit, uh, but now that his wife has passed, he's kind of just a shell, not wanting to really uh, move on, move forward. And at his doorstep one night, we have Junkyard Joe. Of course, Muddy is kind of terrified. He's worried he's having a break in reality before he realizes that he was right all along. This is his friend from the war, and just as mysteriously, he appears out of nowhere yet again. Muddy is relieved to see him. They have kind of a nice reunion. Uh, again, Junkyard Joe is so stoic. He never really talks, anything like that. Uh, but there's a lot of humanity in this robot. It's kind of hard to describe. We actually see depictions of uh, post-traumatic stress, even with Junkyard Joe, as he relives trauma from the war whenever he hears crashing or banging sounds. So really an interesting look at PTS. Uh, overall, it's really, really well done. We have one of the neighbor children seeing Junkyard Joe and Muddy, which leads them into just kind of a further uh, relationship. They have this bonding moment trying to keep this secret. The other children find out, and soon they're kind of all aware of Junkyard Joe. At the same time, we're introduced to a group of villains who also appear to have robot masks, though they might be human. They might be part of some kind of clandestine scientific group that may or may not have created Joe, and they're definitely villains. We see them kind of going through the city and uh, kind of ending certain people. I'll leave it at that. 
uh, but they're this menacing force that's trying to get Joe back. Meanwhile, Muddy, the children, and Junkyard Joe are trying to basically uh, find where Joe came from, what they can do to help him. They think that he might be in some kind of danger. Uh, and meanwhile, this group kind of closes in, closes in, and ultimately this, you know, I'm, I'm skipping a few points, but ultimately this culminates in sort of a final showdown in the city streets between these bad guys and Junkyard Joe, who has now been outed to the public only to have the townspeople kind of gather around him. The townspeople really love Muddy, or particularly Muddy's wife who passed away, and they all grew up with this piece of Americana, Junkyard Joe. So when they see the real flesh and blood, well, no, that's not quite right. When they see the real metal Junkyard Joe before them, they just want to rally to him. So the forces of evil are kind of stopped, and we have Junkyard Joe basically embraced in this community. And then we actually get this cool glimpse where it looks like Geiger and maybe the Red Coat or someone else from this unnamed universe kind of showing up at this barbecue for Junkyard Joe. We have Geiger and them kind of saying something like, oh, we're here too early. There's Joe, but we're here too early. And they kind of go back out of time or something. Uh, a really cool little Easter egg in the same way we may or may not had some cameos in Geiger. Uh, this seemed to tease, again, the future of the unnamed uh, shared universe here. I thought that was a really nice kind of chef's kiss touch toward the end of this book and overall that's really the broad plot synopsis for this junkyard joe collection outside of the main storytelling though looking at the art this is just gary frank in all of his beautiful glory i love this artist i'm really starting to enjoy more and more that i'm getting to read from gary frank he has some outstanding work like i mentioned geiger already i also enjoyed three jokers and some of the like superman stuff i think he was on uh secret origin maybe he was on that i also know things like batman earth one another just incredible showcasing for this particular artist and we have it just in full effect here i like that junkyard joe the comic character is actually a piece of americana because i feel like the art style really feels small town america in this book when we have something like geiger we get sort of frank's vision of kind of a dystopian wasteland future but in the pages of junkyard joe which is still within this image unnamed universe that jeff johns is creating we have him adapting just a homespun small town america kind of setting and i think it's really refreshing to see that and when we have that juxtaposed with the forest of 70s era vietnam it's just some really striking contrast you know we have the the heat of this jungle with sort of the winter scapes in this modern american town it is just really interesting. I think that the settings of this book are really felt and really immersive. We have a lot of just like homes as kind of set pieces. We have city streets as set pieces. And it just really works. I really like the art here. I think it's a little bit uh, understated in some ways that make it just beautiful. And overall, I just can't say enough about it. I think that the paneling and the layouts are all pretty standard, but in a way that works really, really well. I think kind of the cutaways sort of to the... Uh, kind of newspaper clipping version of Junkyard Joe is also a lot of fun. It's a lot more animated and cartoony, and that's really striking to see kind of that even more fictionalized version of Junkyard Joe compared to the more realistic version we get in kind of the air quotes real life uh, comic we see here. Really, really good stuff. I like the art throughout it. Gary Frank is rapidly becoming one of my absolute favorite artists in the industry. I am really fascinated overall, just thinking about Junkyard Joe, at what this piece will be in this overall universe. I think this feels a little bit different than Geiger. Again, the kind of stakes we had with Geiger, the dystopian future, it felt much more epically scoped already. Junkyard Joe, again, feels a little bit more understated. It feels a little more personal and intimate. We have this really interesting depiction of uh, veterans and people serving in the armed forces, and it's a lot more personal of a story and I think that that is so uh, enriching and fun in comparison to Geiger which was also really great and I love the distinctions even within the same creative teams as far as the storytelling differences between this and Geiger and I can't wait again to see future releases in this series and maybe some crossovers in the future hopefully but I think that the future is certainly bright for this whole franchise I'm very eager for it myself 
As far as some downsides to this book, I almost feel like this would have been a better maybe nine issue series versus six. I think that even more so than Geiger, uh, which also left me wanting more, I think that this felt very truncated because I think so much of the storytelling had to happen in Vietnam between that first issue and the flashbacks. But because of that, I feel like the rest of the narrative almost felt a bit compressed. I think the pacing and the kind of sense of tension and conflicts and inciting actions all really uh, they lined up. I think it all worked really well, but I wonder if it would have been a little more effective with even another issue or two tacked on. At any rate, a great run here. I love, we have a great handful of extras here, including a ton of variant covers and some stuff about dedications to servicemen and women in the families of the creators and things about kind of a veterans charity. Really, really a nice touch. I love to see that at the back of this book. Really, really cool. Great job, guys. After doing that first look some months ago at the first three issues, I have to say that this was a highly anticipated release for me, and I'm so excited I finally was able to pick up a copy and give it a read and a review for all of you. I'd love to hear what you all think. I know a couple of you were planning to pick this up. If you've had an opportunity to read it, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd always like to know. And now all that's left, I think, is to give this collection a grade. For another outstanding entry in the unnamed series from Jeff Johns over at Image Comics, filled to the brim with gorgeous artwork from Gary Frank, and a really poignant look at the Vietnam War and conflict over there, an examination of military servicemen and women and veterans, the Comic Book Report is happy to give Junkyard Joe a B. I think I would have loved to see more time in this world. I would have loved to see them unpack and let the characters breathe a little bit. But overall, a really great story. It was rich. It was quick. And it's definitely one I'd recommend for all those out there who like Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, if you're interested in military history, or if you just like a fun, kind of offbeat hero story and you're sick of this, the mainstream uh, superhero fair. This is a really great book. It's an above average read and definitely a recommendation for me. But again, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks everyone for watching, and until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to leave this video a like and share it with your friends. Thank you so much, and have a good one.